Here's the cassette that came with my car, the first car I ever got when I was uh, 16 or 17. It was a 1988 Lincoln Continental. And I'm going to copy this over and put it on YouTube. See what it is. Never played it before. I think it's something they give you with a new car that tells you how nice it is. This audio cassette is designed to help you appreciate and understand your new 1988 Lincoln Continental. Side one begins with a brief message from Lincoln Mercury Division Vice President and General Manager Tom Wagner. Next is a section on Continental's new technology with an explanation of several innovative features and how they help you, the driver. The remainder of side one deals with standard operating instructions. We suggest you listen to this section with the car parked or at home. The tape will take you through the operation of all controls, starting with the instrument panel and continuing through the electronic instrument cluster. And you can follow along as you sit behind the wheel. The standard operating instructions continue on side two, followed by a brief segment on optional equipment instructions. Warranty coverage is then highlighted, and the tape concludes with advice on servicing your Continental. Much of the material on this tape is taken from your Continental owner's manual and you should refer to that document for more detailed explanations. And as always, your Lincoln Mercury dealer stands ready to answer any questions and follow up with you to assure that you are completely happy with your new Continental. Now, Mr. Tom Wagner, Vice President and General Manager of Lincoln Mercury Division. Hello. On behalf of the Lincoln Mercury Division, I would like to congratulate you on your purchase of one of the most technologically advanced quality crafted luxury cars on the market today. This vehicle exhibits all the best traits of a high technology, high performance touring sedan and it has the luxury, room, comfort and amenities you associate with the most expensive of domestic or imported models. As you look around your new Lincoln Continental, you will see good looks and superior craftsmanship. But what you see is only a small part of what is under the skin. Quality by design and execution has become a Ford benchmark by which others are measured. The involvement by each and every employee can be seen and experienced now and for years to come in the appearance and operation of your fine luxury car. Our quality commitment, however, doesn't end when you take delivery of your new Continental. Your Lincoln Mercury dealer will continue to carry out this promise through a quality commitment system designed to assure your continued satisfaction in your new Lincoln. To help you realize the greatest satisfaction and performance from this exceptional automobile, I would like to encourage you to listen to this audio tape in its entirety. Here you find operating instructions, warranty, and maintenance information that will be invaluable in the ownership of your new Continental. Again, congratulations, and thank you for being our customer. You are our number one priority at Lincoln Mercury. As Tom Wagner has pointed out, Lincoln has made a quality commitment to you, not just in the excellence of your new Continental, but in the quality of the service, care, and consideration you receive at your dealership. When you received delivery of your new Lincoln, you also received a symbol of our continuing quality commitment, the Lincoln Commitment Package. This package includes a benefits brochure and a personalized Lincoln Commitment ID card with a hotline toll-free 800 number. All of this is to assure your satisfaction. So, if you have a problem with anything connected with your new Lincoln Continental purchase, we want to know about it. Beginning 30 days from now and periodically throughout your Lincoln ownership, we will be contacting you by mail to solicit your comments and feelings about your car, your dealer, and about us. We hope we can count on your participation in this effort to help us maintain your complete satisfaction. Now. Let's talk about your remarkable new Lincoln Continental. Your new Lincoln Continental looks totally different from previous models. It is sleeker, more aerodynamic, and quiet. Its smooth sides, flush windows, and slick finish offer low resistance to the wind. The low hood, front air dam, and high rear deck are purposely designed to offer the best profile to cut wind resistance and reduce turbulence during acceleration, maneuvers, and deceleration. One measure of this is drag coefficient, and its numbers are low. 
1.35 to be exact. The front halogen headlamps and bright Lincoln grille are aerodynamically designed for less drag. So too is the flush-mounted glass. This all contributes to luxury, feel, quietness, and fuel economy. The lower body panels are treated with a protective coating to reduce road and stone abrasions, while wheel lip and body side moldings reduce the dings and dents of those careless parking lot neighbors. The five mile per hour bumpers wrap around to become integral body members, as do the wrap around full width tail lamps. Mechanically, your new Continental is very sophisticated. It not only features four wheel disc brakes, but also an anti lock brake system. This means that sensors and computers automatically cycle your brakes in emergency stopping situations to prevent brake lockup. Generally, stops on wet or slippery roads are significantly shorter than with conventional brakes, and you're able to maintain positive steering control. The ride you receive in your new Continental is exceptional because the four-wheel independent suspension is computer controlled with air springs and dual damping shock absorbers at each wheel. This gives you a smooth, level ride that automatically compensates the vehicle's attitude for all types of road conditions, speeds, and maneuvers. When you get behind the wheel and drive your Continental, you'll experience another Lincoln refinement. Speed-sensitive, variable assist rack and pinion steering. This varies the steering effort to give you a firmer, more secure feeling at higher speeds while retaining the low effort feature for parking and slower speeds. And you'll experience the responsiveness and performance of a new 3.8 liter V6 140 horsepower engine that uses computer controlled multi-port fuel injection to give you quick response. This new engine features a balanced shaft that idles with less vibration and noise. It teams up with a smooth, efficient four-speed automatic overdrive transaxle for excellent all-around fuel efficiency and drivability in the city or on the open road. You've probably already noticed this is a full six-passenger automobile that's really unique. In 1988, we've taken traditional Lincoln Continental luxury and comfort and joined them to contemporary design and high technology advancements. The result is more inner spaciousness with an unusually high feature content. What that means is that there are a lot of high-tech changes to this newest of Lincolns, many of them resulting in an improved standard equipment level. When you first get in, the EIC, or Enhanced Illumination System, lights up the instrument panel cluster when either front door handle is pulled. This system will also automatically turn off after a 25 to 35 second delay. You'll sit on twin comfort lounge seats, finished in real leather or optional cloth. There's room enough for three in front, or individual fold-down front center armrest when traveling with two. The hump you usually find on the floor is much smaller. That's because now you're driving a front-wheel drive automobile. There's more visibility, too, with the larger glass areas and the addition of rear quarter windows. Sun glare control is managed with standard tinted glass all around and new front and side sun visor extensions along with a center visor for full coverage. A new sun load sensor automatically regulates the climate control. Roof rail assist handles for front and rear passengers also feature new dual rear reading lamps as part of the rear assist handle assemblies. The lamps are dual intensity and in normal position act as courtesy lights. For reading, Slide the light cover over to provide full intensity lighting without the glare reaching the driver's eyes. Looking at the instrument panel, there's a new multifunction. Oil, temperature, battery gauge, and a fuel gauge that indicates fuel level in both digital and analog functions. There's also low oil and washer fluid alerts. Your new Continental will also tell you when it needs service and when there's a problem in engine and instrumentation operating systems. This new onboard system diagnostics feature records the problem and will report it to your dealer's service technician via a new data communications link to the dealership's service computer when you take your Continental in for regular service. The standard easy-to-use trip minder indicates trip distance, average and instant fuel economy, average speed, distance to empty, and a complete system checkout using three simplified controls rather than 12 as in previous Continentals. 
An electronic clock is mounted in the center of the instrument panel, as well as the standard automatic climate control, radio cassette player, and optional compact disc. Speaking of new options, the new Ford compact disc player really offers a dynamic sound source, which deserves the best in audio reproduction systems. That's why the optional Ford JBL audio system is required with this new sound system. Another new option is the memory driver's seat with power lumbar support. This automatically readjusts to the driver's set position when the ignition is turned on and the position number is pressed. The power lumbar support permits you to adjust the seat to relieve lower back strain when driving for long periods of time. Another new option is the InstaClear heated windshield for cold weather climates. When activated, it defrosts up to one-tenth inch of ice on the windshield in about two or three minutes versus about 15 minutes using a conventional defroster. Of course, there are many more traditional Lincoln Continental options. These are simply the most noteworthy new 1988 editions. The second side of this audio tape explains these options in more detail. Now that you're a new Lincoln Continental owner, you owe it to yourself to learn how to get the most pleasure from this advanced product of the technology age. To avoid distractions, it would be wise to play this portion of the cassette tape when the car is parked or at home. In both cases, you should have your owner's manual handy. Let's first consider the controls and indicators on the instrument panel. First, you have four air registers across the panel. These swivel and have movable louvers to direct the air where you want. The right-hand registers can even pivot out from the panel to better direct the air. All have a positive shutoff feature alongside the register, which can be used to stop the air from individual registers and, in turn, direct more air from those left open for individual comfort of driver and passenger. Between the driver's registers is the electronic instrument cluster. There are three cluster control buttons on the left of the cluster. The top button, Gauge Select, controls the multi-gauge to the immediate right of the buttons. This displays engine coolant temperature, battery voltage, or oil pressure each time the button is pushed. You'll note, too, that a tone is sounded each time this control is activated. The engine temperature gauge is identified by a thermometer symbol. The bars fill up to the normal position as the engine warms. If the bars fill to exceed the top of the normal range, the temperature symbol flashes and a tone sounds to alert you that the coolant is overheating. You should stop the engine as soon as safely possible. Then, after a cool down period, check the coolant level according to instructions in your owner's manual. The battery voltage gauge is indicated by a battery symbol. If the alternator is not charging the battery, or if the voltage is above or below the normal range, the battery symbol will flash and a tone sounds to alert you of a non-normal condition. You might note that when the ignition is in the accessory position, this gauge is always displayed to indicate a discharge condition. The oil pressure gauge is identified by an oil can symbol. If the pressure drops below the normal range, the oil can symbol flashes and a tone sounds to alert you that the oil pressure is low. You should stop the engine as soon as possible and check the oil level. Add oil as indicated. Never drive with low oil pressure as severe engine damage can result. The multi-gauge also will signal a service alert by displaying just the top two bars and the bottom two bars of the graphic bar indicator used in all the gauge functions. This tells you that you should contact your dealer as soon as possible for service. You might want to make a note of the fact that when any problem exists in any of the temperature, battery charging, or oil pressure systems, the multi-gauge will automatically change to display an alert in the system affected. The fuel gauge offers both a bar graph and digital display. These indicate the approximate amount of fuel left in the tank. This gauge also operates when the ignition switch is in the accessory position. For fuel levels greater than 17 U.S. gallons or 66 liters, the letter F is displayed digitally to denote a full condition. For fuel levels less than one U.S. gallon or three liters, the letter E is displayed to denote empty. You should note that the fuel tank capacity on your new Continental is 18.6 U.S. gallons. Directly under the gauge select button is a miles per hour, kilometers per hour button. When pressed, this displays English measures like miles, 
gallons, miles per gallon, Fahrenheit degrees, or metric measures like kilometers, liters, liters per 100 kilometers, or centigrade degrees. This button also controls whether the electronic automatic climate control displays in Fahrenheit or centigrade. Again, a tone sounds each time the button is activated. The speed alarm button is at the bottom of this cluster control. This activates or deactivates the speed alarm. To engage this feature, press this button when your car has reached 5 miles per hour below the speed at which you wish to be alerted. A speed indicator at the right of the speedometer lights when this feature is engaged. The speed alarm will sound with three tones every 12 seconds and the display flashes every time the vehicle exceeds the set alarm speed by 5 miles per hour or 5 kilometers per hour. The tone and flashing ceases when the vehicle decelerates below the alarm speed. If the speed alarm is left on when the ignition is turned off, it will automatically re-engage at the previously set alarm speed. To deactivate the speed alarm, press the button a second time. The speedometer is located in the center of the electronic instrument cluster. This indicates the vehicle speed in miles per hour or kilometers per hour, depending on which is selected by the MPH-KPH button in the cluster control. When the ignition is turned on, all speedometer segments light momentarily and then turn off for a second before relighting. This indicates the segments are operating properly. The speedometer is calibrated to a maximum indication of 85 miles per hour or 136 kilometers per hour. The odometer below the speed display indicates the total miles your Continental has been driven. The odometer values can also be displayed in either English or metric measures by pressing the same button used for the speedometer. If the odometer displays the word error in place of total miles, you should contact your dealer for service. Note that a circle S is displayed near the odometer if the odometer has been replaced. The message center is located on the right in the electronic instrument cluster. This provides information on five trip features, 13 checkout items, plus a variety of alert messages. Directly under the message center, the five trip features are indicated by arrows that light when the particular feature is displayed. These include instantaneous fuel economy, average fuel economy, distance to empty, trip distance, and average speed. There are three message center control buttons located below and to the right of the message center on the immediate right of the steering column. The select button controls the trip feature to be displayed. This button can also stop the checkout sequence once it has been activated. The reset button is pressed when you want to have the computer reset the calculations for average fuel economy, trip distance, or average speed, as you might at the beginning of a trip. These features may be reset individually by first selecting the feature and then pressing the reset button. Two quick presses of the reset at one time resets all three features. Instantaneous fuel economy and distance to empty are not resettable. The checkout button controls a sequence of 13 vehicle functions. Additional presses of this button speeds the display of items. As we said earlier, the select button stops the checkout sequence. The 13 functions include oil level, door ajar, trunk ajar, charging system, battery volts, oil pressure, engine temperature, ride control, and washer fluid. In addition, when the headlamps are on low beam, the sequence also checks out headlamps, tail lamps, and brake lamps if you activate the brakes during the checkout sequence. Two other messages can be displayed. One reads, check DCL. The other reads, check engine. If either of these occurs, you should visit your dealer for service as soon as possible. Each of these functions can override current message center communications when an alert condition exists. This will occur for four seconds and a tone is sounded. The brightness of the entire display goes to the brightest setting as an alert. Depending on the severity or importance of the warning, it may be displayed only once continuously, or it may recycle every 16 seconds. If more than one problem occurs, each alert is displayed at least once. After that, they may alternate. Details that explain the meaning of message center alerts are included in your owner's manual.
The electronic digital clock is located at the top center of the instrument panel above the electronic automatic climate control. Three small buttons labeled mode, reset, and set are located next to the clock display. To set the time, press the mode button until the colon between hours and minutes stops flashing. One press of the reset button will display the hour alone. To set the hour, press the set button until the desired hour of the day is displayed. Then press the reset and the minutes alone will be displayed. Press the set button until the desired minutes are displayed. Press the reset once more and the display time has been set. You can use the same method to set the date also. Just press the mode button until the display is in the date mode. You'll recognize this because there is no colon displayed. To set elapsed time, again press the mode button until you see the flashing colon. Then press reset to clear elapsed time to zero. You can press set to interrupt elapsed time in progress. Press set again to resume elapsed time. The anti-lock brake system alert light is located next to the clock. Directly above the rear view mirror are map lights located on each side of the overhead console. To activate these, press the switch above each lamp. You can turn them off with the same procedure. The main light controls are located to the left of the steering column under the left hand register and cluster control buttons. The headlamp, parking lamp, and side markers main control is a rotor at the left of this cluster of controls. Turning it to the first position in a clockwise motion turns on parking lights, side markers, and tail lamps. The headlamps are illuminated by turning the control to the second position. Instrument panel lights may be dimmed or brightened using a thumb wheel control to the immediate right of the main control switch. Turning this thumb wheel fully upward also turns on the interior lamps. The auto lamp system that's standard on the Signature Series and optional on the Standard Series Continental allows you to set the headlamps to automatically turn on during darkness and turn off during daylight hours. It will also keep your headlamps on up to four minutes after leaving the vehicle with the ignition off. And with the auto dim engaged, the system will automatically change your headlamps from high beam to low beam. To set the on off and delay functions of your headlamps, make sure your headlamp switch is off and your ignition switch is on. Then roll the thumb wheel on the far right labeled auto lamp from off position toward delay. The further you turn the wheel to the max position, the longer the lamps will remain on after you've left the vehicle. The automatic on-off function is controlled by a photocell. To turn off both functions, simply reverse the process and roll the lever back to the off position. You can override the automatic on-off headlamp operation manually by simply turning your headlamp switch to the on position. When you do this, an alert tone will sound if you've left your headlamps on after turning off the ignition. The auto dim system will automatically keep your headlamps on low beam while in traffic or lighted areas at night. It will automatically switch to high beam when driving conditions permit. To set the automatic dimmer, first turn your headlamps on. Then move the thumb wheel switch labeled auto dim to the left of the auto lamp thumb wheel from off all the way to max. An indicator light next to this thumb wheel should now be on. If it isn't, Use the dimmer turn signal stop control on the steering column by pushing it away from you until it clicks. The indicator light should now be lit. For normal driving conditions, set the auto dim thumb wheel at the midpoint. The closer you move it to max, the earlier the bright lights will dim. To flash to pass for signaling oncoming traffic, pull the dimmer turn signal lever on the steering column toward you. The high beams will stay on as long as this lever is back even when your headlamps are off. The automatic dimmer function can be turned off by returning the auto dim thumb wheel to the off position or by pulling back on the dimmer turn signal lever and locking in the low beams. The hazard warning switch is located on top of the steering column behind the steering wheel. To activate the flashers, simply push the switch button down. To turn them off, push the switch down again. Flashers can be used with the ignition switch in any position. They can operate for two hours when the battery is fully charged without discharging the battery significantly.
The steering column controls include a multi-function lever, a tilt steering wheel control lever, and a transmission shift lever. The multi-function lever, we already know, controls high beam and low beam functions. We covered this in our auto dim headlamp discussion. You might note that when headlamps are on high beam, a symbolic headlamp located under the multi-gauge on the instrument cluster lights. The lever also offers a flash-to-pass function which activates the front headlamps and makes the high beam indicator on the instrument panel glow when you pull the lever toward you momentarily. As normal for turn signals, pull the lever down for left-hand signaling and up for right-hand signaling. This flashes the front parking lamp and rear tail lamp in unison. The corresponding arrow on the instrument panel cluster will also flash, indicating your flashers are working properly. The turn signals may also be used to signal lane changes without latching the flasher in position. This is done by simply pushing down or pushing up on the lever against the detent until the indicator light starts to flash. Release the lever when you have completed your maneuver. The windshield wiper and washer controls are also located on the multifunction lever. You must have the ignition on or in the accessory position to operate the wipers. To operate the low and high wiper speeds, rotate the knob on the end of the multifunction lever toward the front of the car. For the variable pause interval wiper action, rotate the knob toward the rear of the car. In this position, the wipers will wipe once and then pause for a selected time before wiping again. The length of the pause is variable, with the position nearest the off position the minimum delay between wipes. The washers are operated by pushing the end of the knob in. By holding the button in, the washers provide a constant spray. On release of the washer button, the wipers will operate for one to three cycles before returning to their prior operating function. The tilt steering control is located behind the multifunction lever. To position the angle of the steering wheel for maximum comfort, simply pull the tilt lever toward you and move the wheel up or down. Release the lever when the desired wheel position is reached. This locks the wheel in the new position. This should be done while the car is stationary for maximum safety. The electronic automatic climate control system automatically maintains the temperature selected and regulates airflow between the instrument panel registers, floor ducts, windshield defroster, and the side window demisters. The controls for the system are located in the top center of the instrument panel. By pressing the off button on the right of the digital display, you turn the entire system off. Pressing the automatic button, located under the off control, will turn the system on in a fully automatic condition. Auto is displayed to indicate the system is functioning to maintain the preset temperature indicated on the digital display. The blue cooler button and the red warmer button, located to the left of the display, control the temperature settings upward or downward. The outside temperature button, when depressed, will display the outside temperature for four seconds before returning to the previous display. The outside temperature can be displayed any time the ignition is on, whether or not the climate control system is functioning. The electronic automatic climate control system also features override controls that can direct operation for more individual needs. Depressing the max AC control will direct the system to go to a high blower speed with a maximum cool discharge temperature while in a recirculation mode. The display will read 60 max AC. When max AC is overridden, the system will revert to the previously set temperature. Pressing the vent button will direct the system to operate in an economy mode, blowing fresh air, and will disengage the air conditioner pump. The display will read vent. When the PNL FLR button is pressed, the air is equally distributed between the panel registers and floor ducts. When this happens, the display reads panel floor. Depressing the floor button directs the majority of the air to the floor ducts with a small amount being metered out to the upper registers. The display in this event will read floor. When the button marked FLRDEF is pressed, the air will be distributed equally between the floor ducts, the defroster, and the side window demisters. The display will read floor, and the defrost symbol will be illuminated. Depressing the defrost symbol button 
will distribute the air primarily to the defroster and the side window demisters. The defrost symbol will be displayed. In continuing our consideration of the normal standard equipment operating procedures on your new Lincoln Continental, some of them seem to be simple and self-explanatory. However, your Lincoln Continental is a very sophisticated vehicle. We want to be sure that you're aware of all its remarkable features, big and small. Your electric rear window defroster switch is located to the right of the steering column below the three message center controls. You should start the engine before activating this control. If you put the ignition in the accessory position and start the defroster, it will shut off when the engine is started. When you press the rear window defroster switch, both the rear window defroster and heated rear view mirror are activated, and a light located in the center of the switch glows. This control also activates the heated rear view mirrors. The defroster timer automatically turns off the defroster after 10 minutes. The system can also be turned off manually by pressing the control again. The six-way power seat controls for the driver and passenger are located on each front door trim panel. The power passenger seat is optional on the base Continental and standard on the Signature Series. The controls are shaped like a seat with separate seat cushions and seat back. The arrows on the switch indicate the direction of seat movement. To adjust the seat, simply move the power seat switch in the desired direction. Each front seat also has infinitely adjustable manual recliners. The control knobs are located at the lower rear outboard junction of the seat back and seat cushion. Optional power recliner controls are also located on the master seat switches. The outside rearview mirrors are electrically controlled by a switch control located in the driver's door armrest. To adjust the mirrors, first select the appropriate mirror by moving the selector switch to the left or right. Then adjust the mirror by pressing the appropriate side of the square, identified by an arrow indicating the direction of adjustment. The power window controls are also located here, forward of the mirror control. Four rocker-type controls open or close all windows. A window lock control locks out the individual controls on the other three doors. The power door lock switch is located at the rear of the armrest. When U is pressed, all doors are unlocked. When L is pressed, all doors are locked from outside access. In addition, your new Continental is equipped with child-proof rear door locks. To learn how these function, refer to your owner's manual. Inside your glove compartment are two less frequently used controls. The first is the yellow remote control deck lid release. By pressing this switch when your ignition is on or turn to accessory, you open your trunk by remote control. The orange remote control fuel filler door release is also located here. It operates whether the ignition is on or not. Since the fuel door cannot be opened from outside the vehicle, it must be released by this control. In the event of a malfunction of this control, a manual release is located inside the trunk on the right. Immediately to the left of the glove compartment and under the radio cassette is another storage area convenient to the driver and suitable for small articles. The optional digital compact disc player is mounted here when so equipped. The high-level audio system, standard in the Continental, is located above this storage compartment. This unit features both AM stereo and FM stereo, plus a cassette player and six-speaker premium sound system. The major controls are self-explanatory. The six push buttons below the digital display can be set to store 18 stations, 6 AM and 12 FM. Select the desired station. Then press and hold the desired button for two seconds. The sound will go off. When it returns, the memory for that station is set. This same button can carry additional programmed stations for another band. When playing cassette tapes, the state-of-the-art player unit automatically compensates for metal, chromium dioxide, or standard tape equalization. The optional 4 JBL audio system essentially functions the same, but with greatly enhanced sound reproduction capabilities. The new Ford Compact Disc Player option is covered in another portion of this tape.
The motorized antenna switch is located next to the rear window defroster control under the message center. For more details, check your audio system operating guide located in the owner's portfolio. The speed control switches located at both ends of the steering wheel center bar allow you to automatically control the speed of your new Continental. To set the speed, momentarily press the ON control on the left of the steering wheel center bar. Then, accelerate until you reach your desired cruising speed. Press the Set Excel button on the right of the center bar for just a moment. Then take your foot from the accelerator pedal. If you hold the Set button too long, you will continue to accelerate. To reduce the set speed, press and hold the Coast button, also located at the right side of the steering bar. When the car has slowed to the desired new speed, release the button. You can cancel the automatic speed control by either pressing the brake pedal or turning the system off using the off button. If the system is shut off by using the brake pedal, you can return the car to the previous speed by pressing the resume button for up to a second or until you feel a response. The speed control and resume function will only work when the vehicle is traveling about 30 miles per hour or more. The parking brake is activated by foot pressure on the extreme left-hand pedal on the floor of your new Continental. When this is engaged, an alert light that reads brakes appears in the instrument cluster below the multifunction gauge. The parking brake will automatically disengage when the transaxle is shifted into any forward gear. It can also be disengaged by pulling on the parking brake release lever, located at the extreme lower left of the instrument panel. You should always check the brake alert light each time you start the engine. It will continue to glow if your parking brake is not fully released. There are more details concerning this procedure in your owner's manual. This covers the most important standard operating features of your 1988 Lincoln Continental. Perhaps it's now time to consider some of the optional features. There are a number of new available options for your new Continental. Some of these are included at no extra charge on the Signature Series. Many feature great improvements or are brand new for 1988. There is a programmable memory seat system with a power lumbar support feature. This system enables the driver to store and recall settings for three separate seat positions. The control located on the driver's door panel has three buttons marked Set, 1, and 2. The third position is recalled by pressing 1 and 2 together. The driver should position the seat first. When the set control is pressed, a lamp glows in the control. This means the system's memory is ready for input. You must press 1, 2, or both 1 and 2 together within 5 seconds. To prevent accidental operation while the car is moving, the system is designed to work only when the transmission is in the park or neutral position. Operating any of the seat controls overrides the memory recall function and stops automatic positioning until reactivated by either one, two, or both together. The power lumbar is controlled by buttons located on the outboard side of the seat cushion. The automatic dimming inside rear view mirror, which is part of the overhead console group, is sensitive to bright lights approaching from behind you at night. It will change from a clear reflective surface to one of two darker non-glare positions automatically. The mirror has three adjustments, off, low, and high. To activate it, slide the switch to the high setting and start your car. If you find the high setting too sensitive, slide the switch to the low setting. The mirror automatically selects the best reflective surface for your individual comfort. Take note that when in the auto position, the mirror automatically locks to the normal glare position when you place the car in reverse. This provides a clear view in the mirror when backing up. The optional InstaClear heated windshield control is located under the headlight system controls to the left of the steering column. As we commented earlier, the system is designed to clear ice and frost on the outer windshield surface more quickly than the standard defroster system. You should start the engine before activating this control. The engine speed is automatically increased during this cycle with the gear shift in park or neutral position. Depress the switch and an on indicator light tells you the system is working. The system automatically turns itself off after four minutes. 
It can also be turned off manually by depressing the control button. The new compact disc player takes advantage of the newest high-tech digital recording developments in the industry. It's a perfect match for the 140-watt 10-speaker 4JBL audio system. The system is automatically powered when the JBL audio system is turned on. Load a compact disc by slipping it through the door at the top of the unit. Within a few seconds, the disc will begin playing from the beginning. The door is locked when the power is off or when a disc is already in the unit. An eject button at the right of the door of the disc. You can pause or restart the player by pressing the play pause control. The digital display shows either the track number or the elapsed play time. The button next to the play pause control is the forward automatic music search control. Pressing it once advances the search to the next musical selection. Next to this control is another automatic music search button that works in a similar fashion, but in the reverse direction. At the far left of the CD panel is a repeat button that will allow a single selection of the complete disc to be repeated. To the right of this control is another labeled Comp. This activates audio compression circuitry, which boosts low-level audio signals. This can be useful on some classical CDs to help overcome outside noise. To the right of this control is the display control, which switches the digital indicator from track number to elapsed time display. The relay control will return the disc to the beginning of the first track. A combination reverse and fast forward split control will scan in reverse or forward at high speed, just like a cassette tape deck. The play pause control can also be used to put the player into a pause condition by pressing once. By depressing it and holding for two seconds, you can stop the player entirely. There are more details concerning this exceptional entertainment option contained in the audio systems guide located in your owner's portfolio. The keyless entry system is designed to allow convenient locking and unlocking of your Continental's doors and deck lid without using a key. To unlock the driver's door, punch in the five-digit code that appears on your warranty card or the owner's code card into the switch group located on the outside of the driver's door. If more than five seconds elapse between button activations, the system times out and you have to start over. The driver's door will unlock on the last digit entry. Other car doors will unlock by depressing the 3-4 button within five seconds. The deck lid will unlatch by pressing the 5-6 button within five seconds after sequencing the first five or six digits. When you leave your car, you may lock it from the outside by pressing two buttons, 7-8 and 9-0 at the same time. You can also program a second code by first inserting the original owner's code and then depressing the 1-2 button within 5 seconds. Then, within 5 seconds of each, press your own 5-digit personal code into the system. The system will remember this until you erase your personal code. This can be accomplished by simply inserting the original owner's code and then depressing the 1-2 button. The system will clear your personal code within 6 seconds. The keyless entry system includes the optional illuminated entry system, which functions when either front door handle is pulled or any button is pushed on the keyless entry system. This activates your Continental's courtesy lights. If the door is left ajar, the lights will stay on. Otherwise, they turn off about 25 seconds after they've been activated or when the ignition lock is turned to on or the accessory position. The optional dual power seat recliners are activated by a control on the driver's and front passenger's door panels that looks like a seat in profile. This is located next to the door handle. The control is positioned in the seat back silhouette and functions with an infinite series of settings. The arrows on the control indicate the direction of seat back movement. Simply press the desired positioning and the seat back will adjust to your requirements. There are many more notes about operating other options along with important driving tips, alert details, light repairs, and maintenance recommendations contained in your owner's manual. You should always carry it with you in the car and be familiar with those systems on your new 1988 Lincoln Continental. Now let's cover some warranty highlights. Under the provisions of the Ford Motor Company New Vehicle Limited Warranty, 
your new Lincoln Continental has an excellent protection plan. All of the details were included when you received delivery of your new Continental. However, with your indulgence, we'd like to cover the major features in the next few minutes. The basic coverage on your 1988 Continental is 12 months or 12,000 miles, whichever comes first, for all parts except tires. A 12-month warranty, regardless of mileage, has been extended to the radio, tapes, CD player components, and the factory-installed heater, air conditioning, rear window defroster, heating elements in the outside rearview mirrors, and the InstaClear windshield. But that's just the basic coverage. There's more. You also have corrosion coverage for repairs to correct perforation from corrosion of any body sheet metal. This covers your Lincoln Continental for six years or 100,000 miles, whichever comes first. Other corrosion due to a defect without perforation is covered for the basic 12 months or 12,000 miles. If your car becomes inoperable and must be kept out of normal use overnight by the dealer to make a warranty repair, the Ford Motor Company will pay a base rental of not more than $30 per day, excluding mileage, for a substitute vehicle up to five full days while the repair is being completed. So far, we're still talking about basic coverage, but there's still more. There's major component coverage for the first retail owner that picks up where the 12 months, 12,000 miles basic coverage leaves off. This provides additional protection until you have owned your Lincoln Continental for six years or 60,000 miles, whichever occurs first. There's a $100 deductible provision for each warranty repair visit, unless the car or applicable component are covered under the emissions warranty. The covered components include the engine, transaxle, axle and drive, engine cooling and fuel systems, steering, front suspension system, brakes, air conditioning, electrical system and electronic components. Of course this doesn't include normal wear and items like brake pads, wiper blades and spark plugs. This kind of protection gives your new Lincoln Continental extra value should you decide at some future date to trade. That's because the second retail owner can acquire any unexpired portion of the major component coverage for a transfer fee of $100. There are many details that inform you about the exceptional protections afforded you in your new Lincoln Continental purchase. These are included in the warranty materials, including the separate tire warranty from the tire manufacturer you received when your new Continental was delivered. We suggest you read them carefully and understand the extent of the many assurances you have received from Ford Motor Company. The extended service plan for your Lincoln Continental also offers valuable protection provisions. This optional service contract between you and your Lincoln Mercury dealer can cover 75% of the $100 deductible charges for warranty repairs to covered components after the basic coverage has expired. It also provides for other services like towing and transportation assistance when applicable under the provisions of this ultimate option. With both the new warranty coverage and the extended service plan working for you, you can count on truly carefree ownership and quick professional assistance when you need it. Let's discuss some of the things that come under the heading of normal service. The kinds of simple steps you yourself can take to assure long, trouble-free driving. There are a number of suggestions contained in your owner's manual concerning servicing your 1988 Lincoln Continental. These can be invaluable in saving you time and unnecessary service costs. You should familiarize yourself with these recommendations so that you can realize the best possible performance from this superior automobile. The fuel you use in your new Continental should be of a good grade and with an octane rating no lower than 87. Lincoln Mercury recommends that you purchase fuel with a good detergent level to maintain the high performance of your multi-port fuel injection system. If you are unsure of the quality of the gasoline you're purchasing, Ask your service station attendant. Ford Motor Company vehicles will operate satisfactorily on alcohol gasoline blends, containing no more than 10% ethanol by volume and having an octane index of 87 or higher. You should also check your oil every 500 miles. When replacing oil, use only SAE 5W30 that meets API standards of SF or SFCC or SFCD only. If you continually drive in hot temperatures exceeding 100 degrees Fahrenheit, you should use SAE 10W30 oils. To check your oil, 
pull the hood release lever on the bottom of your steering column. Outside, lift the plastic sheathed release paddle at the front hood opening and lift the hood, which is counterbalanced by a gas strut. Pull out the oil dipstick and wipe with a rag or paper towel. Replace it until it is fully seated and remove it again. If the level is at or below the bottom of the cross-hatched indicator area, you should add oil as indicated through the oil filler on the top of the engine valve cover. Lincoln Mercury recommends oil changes every 7,500 miles under normal driving conditions. We suggest you see your Lincoln Mercury dealer for oil changes and periodic maintenance services. If you prefer to change your own oil, follow the procedures outlined in your owner's manual. While the hood is open, you can also check the level of your windshield washer fluid located in a translucent see-through container. The engine coolant reservoir is also a translucent container. When the system is hot, coolant expands and flows into the container. When the system cools, it draws coolant from this container. Don't remove the radiator cap. Just inspect the coolant reservoir. Coolant levels should be maintained at or higher than the full hot mark when the engine is hot. If the engine is cold, the level should be maintained at higher than the full cold mark. When the coolant is low, add a 50-50 mixture of specified coolant and water to your cooling system reservoir. You should check this system at least once a month. Your owner's manual has the correct coolant specifications, plus suggestions on dealing with constantly low coolant problems and regular coolant maintenance intervals. You should also check your transaxle fluid level periodically. This cannot be accomplished if the engine is cold. You should drive the car the equivalent of 15 or 20 miles before checking. With the transaxle in park and your foot on the brake, move the shift lever through each gear. Return to park. Set the emergency brake and block the wheels. The fluid must be checked with the engine idling and the car on level ground. Clean any dirt from around the dipstick before removing. Then remove the transaxle dipstick. Wipe it clean and replace it until it is fully seated. Pull the dipstick out and check the fluid level. The fluid level should be in the cross-checked area on the dipstick at operating temperature. Before adding fluid, check the vehicle certification label on the driver's door pillar or on the dipstick for fluid type. If indicated, add fluid to the filler tube to raise the fluid to the correct level. You should be careful not to overfill since this will result in foaming, loss of fluid through the vent, and possible transaxle malfunction. Your brake fluid can be checked by observing the line marked MAX on the translucent master cylinder reservoir located on the wall at the rear of the engine compartment. First, with the ignition off, pump the brake pedal until it becomes hard to depress. Turn your ignition switch on and wait for about one minute to make sure the fluid has stabilized. Then, with the ignition still in the on position, check the brake reservoir fluid level. This should read at the full max line. If the level is low, carefully clean the filler cap before uncapping. Then fill to the max line using only DOT grade 3, such as Ford heavy duty brake fluid. Power steering fluid checks are another function that must be accomplished when the engine has reached normal operating temperature. With the engine idling, Turn the steering wheel several times through its full path of travel. Then turn off the engine and check the fluid level on the dipstick. The level should show in the full hot range on the dipstick. If low fluid is indicated, add only Ford Motorcraft automatic transmission and power steering fluid or other Type F power steering fluid. When returning the dipstick to the reservoir, always make sure it is seated and locked. This completes our review of your new 1988 Continental. We wish you much motoring pleasure from this high-tech marvel of style and comfort. We know that the quality by design and execution, along with a concern for lasting appearance in a motor vehicle which wears well, will make you proud to be a Lincoln Continental owner. As Mr. Wagner stated, the Lincoln quality commitment doesn't end when you purchase the car. It lives on with the extra care you receive every time you visit your Lincoln Mercury dealer. On behalf of the Ford Motor Company's Lincoln Mercury division and your Lincoln Mercury dealer, we thank you for taking the time to learn about your new Lincoln Continental 
and wish you a long and satisfying ownership. Thank you.